Have you ever wanted to add some really cool 3D dimensionality to your web design projects, but you don't know how to code like that? It's not a problem anymore because Framer has just dropped 3D transforms and it is mind blowing. I have a responsive website that I'm building in Framer. And first I'm gonna go through and play with some elements and show you all the different capabilities of 3D transforms. And then we're gonna build a really cool 3D hover interaction. Let's jump down to a part of our landing page. We have a couple of these bento cards happening here. And if I wanna add 3D transforms to an element, all I have to do is scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner and you can see that I get this option for all the different transforms. And we have a bunch of different options. The first one that I'm gonna add is a scale transformation to this card. Now, the reason scale is so powerful is because if I wanted to scale up this element and change the size of it, I'm gonna move all the different elements around it and I might not wanna do that. But by using this transform, it's gonna allow me to scale things up and it will not affect the placement of this element in the layout itself. So that's pretty cool. We're actually gonna be able to animate back and forth between that scale transform is gonna create some really, really cool effects. Let's take a look at what else we got going. Not only can we add scale, but we can add things like skew. So for instance, we could take this individual card, we could scale it up a little bit like so, and then we could also skew it. And when you skew on the X axis, it's gonna make it go left and right pretty much. And when you scale on the Y axis, it's gonna go up and down or vertically like so. So we're gonna get rid of that because it looks a little bit funky. And again, all you have to do is right click on this and you can remove any of these properties. You can also copy them and then paste them right over to any other element that you're working on to save you a bunch of time. Let's add another transform. This time we're gonna add rotate and our two dimensional rotate is pretty snooze fest, pretty boring. But when we turn on 3D, we start to get some really cool options here. For instance, we start to rotate in the X axis. That's going to make the card flip towards or away from us. You can also rotate the Y and you can rotate the X and you can get some pretty cool things happening here. You can see if I just zoom out of this card and zoom back in so we get a little bit more clarity. We've done something kind of interesting there. Now it doesn't look quite right because we're just starting to flip it on those accesses. So instead, what we can do is come in here and we can give it a little bit of perspective. When we do that, you'll notice my card shifted a little bit. Let's zoom back in. We're actually getting that perspective size. It's actually all going towards one consistent vanishing point, which if you remember our class 101, if you're looking at the horizon, everything is disappearing in perspective towards that vanishing point. We're gonna get that same type of behavior here. We can also add depth and start to play with that depth. That's gonna be able to move it towards you away from you or towards you again without messing up any of its spacing so let's remove that one because we don't need that one right now we can also add uh, origin and that's going to change the position from where it has come from right so do we want to start down here do we want to start up there you can actually get some interesting kind of like effects by using origin you could put multiple cards like this uh, but using Z index on top of each other and you could fan them out using that origin could be pretty cool. We also could add another effect. This is our back face effect right now. Uh, if we flip this card over using our X rotation, we're going to see the opposite side of it, which is kind of cool actually. Uh, but maybe we want to hide it. So it disappears into the ether as we scroll around it. We can hide the back face of it like so. So let's keep ours visible. That'll be pretty cool. And the last one is that we can preserve 3D. Now let's take everything we've learned and apply it to a really cool 3D hover effect using all of those transforms that we talked about earlier. Jump back into my design and we have these really cool bento cards. I would love to roll over this and not just have the entire card move as one piece, but have everything move as separate pieces inside. So I've gone ahead and I've taken this entire element and I've pulled it out and I've created a component out of it. Why don't I double click into that component component so you can see how it's built. We have everything inside of a frame. So that means all of our content here is inside of its own stack. And then each of those little pieces, our lines, our small card behind, and our large card are all just absolutely positioned inside of that component. And this is very important that we actually have this thing wrapped in a frame. We're going to call this frame container. And it's, we're not actually just depending on the size of the component itself. We need to be able to move things around. If I click on the component, you'll see I come down here to the right. I have no transform options. 
But if I create that container, I now have access to all the different transforms that could take place. So we see that it has 3D rotation on. Let's just go ahead and we, we had 2D. We're going to slap it over to 3D uh, rotation. And we're also going to add a couple more things. We want to have some perspective. We would like to scale this card. And we would also like to preserve 3D. We've put all those things on that initial state. And we're going to name that initial state to closed and then we're going to come over here and create a new state and we'll call this one open and that means on hover it's going to move from this one once we set the trigger in the interaction over to this card now what do we want to do in this card first thing i want to do is i want to click inside i'm going to grab the entire container and i'm going to go down i'm going to access that 3d transformation so i'm just going to move it back a little bit and i'm going to have it kind of transition over this way. And one thing we'll see is it's kind of cutting it off. So we're gonna grab the entire component from the original state there. And I wanna make sure that the overflow is set to visible. And when I do that, you'll see it should work out just fine. And we do also, we need to make sure we're rounding the corners of our container. So why don't we do that on the master or the initial state there. We're gonna go down and we're gonna find our radius. And why don't we just turn that to something like 30. Now it looks a little bit more like a card. Beautiful, now the whole thing is twisting. And now I wanna have the actual elements inside, like my little mini cards, actually push off of the card uh, as well. So why don't we come into our open state here. I'm gonna grab that widget large there, and I'm gonna jump down to those transforms. And we don't have any transforms set there. So why don't we come back to the original and we're gonna set a few on there. So we have, again, we can do 3D rotation, scale, and let's also preserve 3D there. And you'll see why here in a second. Uh, and then when I move back to my closed version of this, the widget large, then I'm able to actually scale this up. So why don't we scale it like so? And because the overflow is set to visible, things can drip outside of the component, which is really nice. We could rotate it a little bit if we wanted to, uh, and we can actually set preservation there. And now what we can do is actually grab the element and we can move it up and over like so, okay? So we have that thing kind of flying off. Let's put it somewhere around there. We are going to grab uh, the smaller one down below. Why don't we move it like this? and we will actually do some of those similar elements, right? So we're gonna to come to our original one and we're going to, we have rotate rotate on 3D. We're gonna do scale. We could probably just stop there and then we come to the open version, grab small there and why don't we scale that one up as well. And why don't we just grab our entire lines element and kind of shift that up and over. And now what we're gonna do is grab the entire component, okay? And when we do that, we get our trigger element. So we're gonna drag that over and say on mouse enter. And then why don't we grab this one and drag it back and say on mouse leave. Beautiful, just like that when we come back. And actually we can go back into that and we can preview and see what it's gonna look like. As I hover over it, I get that really cool 3D transformation that's happening. Now, there's a lot more that I could do to it. I could add a little bit of a looping or mirrored effect here. So why don't I grab my widget large and, and my widget small at the same time, and we're gonna add an effect here. We're gonna add a little bit of a loop and we're gonna set it to mirror and we don't want it to spin, so we're gonna do this, but we're just going to offset things a little bit. So let's do something like 15 and 10 and that's going on both of them. I'm going to grab one of them and just change it a little bit so that it's going the other way. Maybe negative five that way and negative five that way. Okay, now when we press play on it, you can see we get a little bit of that looping effect. It is probably set in a linear kind of way. So why don't we grab both of those again and just take them off of linear and choose something like ease in, ease out, press play. And now we get a nice kind of fun kind of easing or timing and again you can hover into this hover out of it just like so that's perfect so now we have our element and we're going to copy this and why don't we just paste this in place we're going to take our feature card and we're going to replace with i think inside of our project we're going to replace it with that card if we were to look at it how it is right now as we scroll down we can hover over it and we get some of that really cool 
three dimensionality. So actually really cool that it shrunk the size of it. It works well for our bento grid. And that's it. That's how easy it is to create really cool interactions using Framer's new 3D transform effects. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments and check the description for this file if you'd like to remix it and practice it on your own. Hope you're having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and just making the web a more beautiful place. We'll see you in the next one.